thanks very much for everyone uh, for coming this evening. This is actually the first meetup we've had at CAPCO, um, so you are, you can say you were there. Um, so I'm just going to do a brief introduction of myself. I'm Jonathan Fennick. I'm head of digital engineering at CAPCO. Um, people always ask me, what does that mean? It covers software engineering, DevOps, cloud, test automation um, for our clients, um, which we'll get onto in a minute. Um, I've worked at Capco for about six months, seven months. Uh, before that, I was at Bartley's for 10 years. Um, I'm going to be presenting with my colleague, Jasper. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, I've been at Capco for two years. I'm a digital technology consultant. Mm -hmm. uh, I came in from academia, so I was on the academic track and then moved into Capco. We focused on mainly automation testing. Okay, so our talk today is about testing in prod. Are you crazy? I think for a lot of people, the idea that you're going to test in production is a crazy thought. Um, but I think it's an emerging pattern that you're going to see, and there's lots of reasons for that. And, and as we talk through, hopefully you're going to see some of the rationale behind that. And we're going to finish with a, a demo of how you might do that, or a video, I should say, because we don't trust the Wi-Fi in the basement. Um, so firstly, who are Catco? Because you're in our, our building gets voted uh, one of the top 10 build buildings to work in in the UK by Glassdoor. Um, we're a financial service consultancy. We're only 20 years old. There's about 5,000 people um, in 28 countries. Um, there's some of our clients there. You probably recognize a lot of them. Uh, we, we, we pretty much work with every single big financial service organization in the world. And that's not all of them. That's just some of them. Uh, and we're growing very fast. Uh, uh, so. A financial case study. So before we get into why you might want to test in production, here's a story, but it's a true story, and it's a story that actually happened this year. Some people may be familiar with it, some may not. Uh, it's actually TSB. Um, <laughs> they were being split out from Lloyd's Banking Group. Um, large scale, difficult migration happens in financial services all the time. They started in the summer of two, 2016. They're supposed to go live in, in 2017. They didn't. They went live in 20th of April. Within one week. Um, Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. You probably mentioned the 20 years it took them to merge the first one. Yes, yes. <laughs> there, 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 is, there is that small detail as well. Once they got there, they're splitting out. But um, within one week, it was quite apparent there's quite some, some significant issues, right? So what do those significant issues look like? It looks like people accessing other people's bank accounts, being able to make payments on their behalf, um, people not being able to pay their bills or extract money, uh, waiting in a call center for about four hours to have your, your, your call answered from a customer service perspective. Um, story moves on. Um, there was an investigation, uh, Treasury Select Committee, uh, regulator, and essentially a lot of this is tracked back to a lack of discipline around technical delivery and specifically within the space of testing. And this is public information, you can go and read about that and you can read a lot about what the challenges were. But if I was to summarise some of those, it's that the testing and the QA that they did didn't really replicate their production environment that they were going into. They didn't really understand their non-functional requirements and they didn't really understand as well as they should have done um, the functionality that they were delivering. Some numbers at the bottom. It's currently cost them 175 million pound um, to try and redress customers. Uh, so it's very painful. Uh, the CEO was fired as a result of it. Um, so it's quite a serious event. Um, much smaller events like, like this happen in financial services all the time, not just limited to financial services, but um, f f from our line of business, we see challenges like this. So why does this happen? Or why should we consider um, testing in production? So this is a quote, it's on Twitter by this lady, some person may know her, some, some people may follow her blogs and her tweets. Um, this is a very good quote because I think it, brings things home, which is that lots of people that have worked in technology for a long time have heard, well, it works on my machine, right? It works on my machine, I'm a developer, why doesn't it work in production? But actually, 
testing something in a test environment and a staging environment is actually only one level above that. It's not actually running in production, right? <laughs> it's not against the production configuration. It's not with production volumes quite often or production data volumes. Um, so should we be considering testing in production, I think is a very valid question. Common challenges, and these are challenges that we see across financial service organisations, but again, I think it would um, resonate with people that work in other industries and other verticals as well. Um, environment parity, so are the environments on which testing um, is undertaken, are they similar or even close to production environment? I'd suggest not. I'd suggest that's getting slightly better with cloud environments, but it's still possible to have big differences. Um, is the data representative? Again, I'd suggest it's not. So um, financial services specifically, you can't move your production data out of production um, without significant um, challenges. Um, therefore, it's very difficult to replicate the same volume of data. Um, it's not necessarily aligned across different systems in a very highly distributed connected environment. Um, and that causes problems. The testing that gets done is, is, is a best guess to try and get as close to that production environment as possible. Um, Non-representative traffic. So what I mean by that is trying to simulate um, traffic that is lifelike over a period of time, peaks in certain transactions at certain times of the day. And again, performance testing tries to address this, but a lot of that work can be guesswork. Yep, and it's being done on a non-representative environment um, and a, a, with, with, with different setup. And then environment reliability. So environment re reliability is a really big issue because essentially it holds up testing, um, holds up quality testing. We don't know if that's an environment issue, whether it's a test data issue, whether it's a real issue. Um, and it puts a lot of pressure on um, practitioners of testing to get that completed, particularly in financial services, if there are regulatory timelines to meet that can't be moved. Um, so these are the four sort of emerging themes that we see. Um, so how might you go about testing in production? So the first thing to say about this is, I don't think anyone is advocating that you shouldn't do pre-production testing, right? You can, see on, you can see on the left hand side all the different layers of testing that ideally you would be executing comprehensively across your landscape and, and, and doing that in a very well controlled way and, and, and making sure that, 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 that the software that, or, and solutions that you're looking to push out are correct. However, there are some things based on those common challenges that we've just seen that aren't really possible to replicate. And what, we, what we're sort of talking about here is really a change in a workflow on the path to production. So typically, it's build, test, release. Obviously, multiple environments if you have to do multiple <coughs> layers of testing. But there's emerging technology and there's emerging practices that can actually change that workflow to be test, deploy, test, release and separate the concept of deployment from release and allow you to get software into your production environment and enable you to start testing that to give you more confidence on top of the, the already standard testing that you would do in a non-production environment. Um, I'm not going to read down the list that I've got highlighted in pink, but this is really the area that we're going to focus on, on in the demo. And I'm going to call out two very specific techniques. One is called shadowing or mirroring, um, which is essentially the ability to duplicate production traffic. And tap compare, which is essentially um, the playing of real production traffic into a test. Um, and Jasper is going to walk through a demo of this. But this is how we see this being positioned. This is how we um, see testing and production emerging, a change in the, in the workflow, um, some of the testing being done in production um, on top of the, of the testing that's already um, done extensively at the start of the um, workflow. With that, I'm going to hand over 
to Jasper, who's going to talk us through a use case of how you might achieve this. And then we're going to look at a demo of how that may look and how that may help people in terms of testing and then ultimately releasing to production in a more controlled way. Cool, thanks. Okay, so now that Jonathan has warmed us up, uh, oh no, you've got another slide. <laughs> I've got another slide, apologies. Yes, yes, right, so, uh, cap cap capability. So, so I think the techniques that we're gonna describe are really coming out about some of the flexibility that cloud native technologies are enabling. But these are four areas that you really have to have a strong story about if you are gonna look to pursue testing and production. So side-by-side -side deployment, you have to have the ability to deploy solutions side-by-side -side in production. You have to be able to manage traffic. And what I mean by that is configurable routing of your network to be able to pass transactions, tag transactions, to know if a transaction is a real transaction or whether it's a test transaction. Um, centralized logging so that you've got data to compare um, error rates, performance, etc., cetera, of side-by-side um, -side deployed services. And then you also need to have a really strong story around infrastructure monitoring. Now, if you think about test environments in a more traditional sense, this is maybe better in purely cloud environments, certainly the last two are missing generally, right? Test environments don't have the full setup of production environments because they're not managed like production environments, they're managed like test environments and they get that level of support. Um, so these are the four capabilities that I'd suggest that you need if you're gonna pursue a testing production strategy um, that need to be in place, okay? And now, correctly, we'll go to the demo. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, now that Jonathan has truly warmed us up, <laughs> I'm gonna talk us through a, a demo. Shouldn't take more than three and a half, four minutes. Uh, so this is our scenario that we are playing out. We have in a, Kubernetes, a Google Kubernetes cluster, a live version of an API uh, with a dedicated database, and we have live traffic coming into it through Istio. And what we've done is we have created an updated version of the API that has modified um, one of its endpoints to now have an optional field. Uh, and the plan is to deploy this into this production cluster uh, and at this point, there's no traffic coming into it. We will then instruct Istio to start mirroring traffic. So this live stream of traffic that is coming into in version one will start to come into version two as well. And here, it will, it will, the version two traffic, the, uh, the traffic that comes into version two will also be appended to the database dedicated to version two, uh, as well as it being uninterrupted uh, in terms of the process of version one. So not only this, um, because Istio allows traffic management based on headers within calls, we can then run uh, tests, so functional tests that we are hitting on the production endpoint, the production API, by appending a, a, head, a specific header that Istio is familiar with uh, to the request. It will redirect that traffic into API, uh, the version 2 of the API, alongside all of the production traffic that is coming in. So alongside this, we'll also look at monitoring, how we can monitor what this looks like. Uh, and in particular, we're going to use Grafana, which is an Istio-based monitoring tool, which looks at the traffic, uh, so that's network traffic. We're also going to look at uh, Jaeger, which is another tool which um, mon uh, monitors tracing. So it looks at the tracing of, of events. So in doing this uh, scenario flow, we're doing three different types of testing. So we're looking at regression through shadowing or mirroring. So we're mirroring the traffic from our live uh, feed, passing it into version two, and then we can compare the results to see if there's any, uh, any regressions. Uh, additionally, we're doing performance testing, essentially, with real traffic. So real traffic is flowing into our, our version two, and we can evaluate the performance of this <coughs> using Jaeger. And additionally, the same scripts that I would run in pre-production, I can run in a production environment. So this would be the exact same, but instead I'm pointing it to the production API. So now I'm going to move on to the video. Uh, three and a half minutes. If um, the only way, so I know this works, so the only way this will mess up is if I forget what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so um, here we have, so it's running. So 
on the bottom left, we have version one running in the cluster. We have up in the top right corner, the traffic coming in. So these are endpoint calls repeatedly coming in and you can see it being updated in the tail of the logs. In this top left section, we're about to deploy version two. So this is the version two of, uh, of our system. And now it's been deployed into the Kubernetes cluster and it's sitting there traffic free, just side by side <laughs> deployment, not doing anything. Uh, and here we're about to see the tail of those logs just to prove that nothing is going through them. And there it is, so it's up and running, nothing is happening. Uh, so, traffic free, we add in the command to start shadowing and you'll see this traffic is now, as well as going to version one, is being redirected to version two. Um, so now uh, production traffic is going through version two and if we have a look at uh, Grafana, which is about to come up. There, Grafana. Version 1 is showing us the traffic uh, going out of version 1, and on this side, nothing is coming out of version 2. So as although there's traffic coming in, nothing coming out. But we can inject traffic going in using our functional test scripts. So now uh, we're about to do functional testing on the new functionality of version 2. Uh, we're hitting the same uh, endpoint. We've just added in uh, a header, which Istio knows to redirect to version two. So here we've paused it just to show you the logs of the test coming into version two. Um, and the test report of that functional test shows that everything is green. So functionally we're sound, we're hitting the production endpoint. We're using this uh, header, which you can't see, which is what is redirecting it through Istio. So everything is fine functionally. Uh, if you go back to Grafana, we can see there is a spike in the response volume and that is directly related to our tests. So functionally, everything is looking good. We're testing it in production. We've done a test script alongside uh, uh, production data. However, now we can look at the performance of this. And it's about to change. There is the performance. So this is Jaeger, and it's measuring the trace uh, of each version one and version two. Uh, and if we extract these graphs so that they are side by side, we can see that version one responses are in less than 30 milliseconds. Version two, for some reason, though, has an increasing, increasing delay, almost as if someone purposely injected a delay <laughs> into it's, our it's demo. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Thanks, Jonathan. So version two has a delay. There's a production problem. There's a problem with the performance in production. So we are in this deployment phase. All we have to do is kill it. So we stop the, uh, stop the mirroring and we will see it stop here in just a second. So mirroring has stopped. Nothing is going through version two. Uh, I think we're just about to prove, yeah. So yeah, nothing is coming through. Logs have stopped. So the next thing to do is a, as a business decision, even though functionally everything is sound, we just remove that container from the Kubernetes cluster. <laughs> so that is it deleted. It's removed from here. Production uh, traffic is still going to version one as it has been throughout the entire test. Uh, and essentially what we've tried to show in this demo is that we've done this testing of version two. Function we've done functional testing of version two in the production uh, cluster. Uh, performance showed that it was not good. And then we just rolled it back. And our, essentially our live traffic users are none the wiser. So that kind of brings us to the end of a very kind of quick demo and uh, takes us to a wrap up. Um, so with this, we're trying to identify testing in production as, as a tool to significantly reduce common testing challenges. And for a tester, for me anyway, that is essentially, will this work for the user? And by testing in production, it certainly helps, uh, certainly helps with that. Uh, cloud native architectures are enabling new approaches. I mean, testing and production is not a new thing, but what is new are the technologies that are emerging recently. For example, Istio is something that's really allowed us to kind of drive this uh, idea forward. Um, you know, Kubernetes clustering. Uh, also, is that, and this is an important caveat that Jonathan mentioned earlier, testing and production does not mean we don't test in pre-production. Everything we do in pre-production remains the same. This is simply another tool in our arsenal to be able to judge whether something is production ready. Um, it requires necessarily a change in the way we think about testing, a change in the way we think about deployment and release. So it's this riffling effect of tests. So it's pre-production <coughs> test, deploy, production test, and then release, and roll back if necessary before we even show anything to a user. 
Um, we can do automated and manual testing. So here it was, uh, it was a script that was an automated script, um, but equally the endpoint is exposed. We just hit it with a specific header and we can do manual testing as well. Um, and this is new. So I ex we both expect, I think all of us expect that this is, will be developed further in terms of the best practices. And this is just the beginning. This is a taster. Uh, and also that obviously with most things, it's not for every project uh, and it's not for every product. Um, so that essentially brings us to, wraps, that wraps up. We do the Q and A, if anyone has any questions. I'll bring Jonathan back so I can field the difficult questions. Okay, thanks. 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 Uh, and that's us.